Which nation boasts the most significant number of Muslims globally? You might guess Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Egypt, or Nigeria, but it's actually none of these. The country with the largest Muslim population is Indonesia. A vast majority, about 87% of Indonesians, profess Islam as their faith. In a survey from 2010, Indonesia was identified as having the world's most extensive Muslim population, totaling around 220 million adherents. Considering that Islam originated in the Arabian Peninsula in the 7th century and spread primarily across North Africa and Southwest Asia, one might wonder how this religion traversed oceans and continents to take root in an archipelago like Indonesia. What historical currents carried Islam to these distant islands, and how did they come to embrace the Muslim faith? Following the passing of Prophet Muhammad, a series of Muslim conquests gave rise to expansive caliphates. These Islamic states grew swiftly, encompassing vast territories. The propagation of Islam was significantly propelled by the efforts of missionaries, particularly imams, who, riding the waves of swift military conquests, disseminated the faith's doctrines among the indigenous populations. In the wake of their conquests, the emergent Islamic dynasties not only concentrated on promulgating their newfound religion, but also on probing into economics and commerce. The Islamic Golden Age saw a surge in conversions to Islam among various strata of society, including royalty, nobility, and commoners like tradespeople and merchants. Such widespread adoption facilitated the religion's swift reach across the vast expanses of the Indian and Atlantic Oceans. During the early 7th century, Islam began to make its presence known in the Indian subcontinent, notably with the arrival of Arab traders. These merchants frequently journeyed to the Malabar coast, which served as a pivotal trade conduit between the Arab world and the ports scattered across Southeast Asia. Prior to Islam taking root in Arabia, Arab merchants and traders had already become emissaries of the nascent faith, spreading its teachings along their trade routes. Nonetheless, it was the expansive wave of Muslim conquests across the Indian subcontinent over the ensuing centuries that truly cemented the presence of Islam in the region. In the dissemination of Islam across Asia, Muslim missionaries were instrumental, with some even taking on the guise of merchants. These emissaries were dispatched throughout the continent in every direction, frequently adopting the role of traders. They were tasked with engaging potential converts in their native languages, facilitating a more personal and effective spread of the Islamic faith. Before Islam took root within Indonesian communities, Muslim sailors and traders frequently visited what is now Indonesia. Many of these early mariners and merchants hailed from territories under the Abbasid Caliphate, particularly from its newly established ports like Basra and Debal. These regions were sought after for their wealth in spices, exotic fruits, and other valuable commodities. Arab Muslim traders are documented to have reached Indonesia as early as the 8th century. However, the significant spread of Islam in the region began only in the 12th or 13th century, further accelerated by the conversion of local rulers and elites to Islam. Missionaries journeyed to Indonesia from various lands, including India and later the southern Arabian Peninsula. It is thought that by the 13th century, Islam started to take hold along the northern coast of Sumatra. Subsequently, the spread of Islam was propelled by Sufi orders and further solidified through the territorial expansions of rulers who had converted to Islam, along with their communities. Without precise knowledge of the exact date of conversion initiation and lacking definitive evidence of Islam's initial arrival in the region, it is reasonable to surmise that the spread of Islam began around the 11th or 12th century. The earliest Muslim gravestone markings in the area date back to 1080. Additionally, Marco Polo's observations during his visit in 1292, where he noted the urban port state of Pireolac as Muslim, provide further historical context to Islam's presence in the region. 
the earliest recorded evidence of a Muslim dynasty in the region, marked by a gravestone dated back to 1297, belongs to Sultan Malik al-Saleh. He is acknowledged as the inaugural Muslim ruler of the Samudera Pasai Sultanate. Chinese historical sources document the arrival of a Muslim delegation from the Kingdom of Samudra to the Emperor in 1282. The expansion of Islam followed the trade routes eastward, traversing predominantly Buddhist regions. About half a century later, the Sultanate of Malacca emerged as the first dynasty in the area. This Sultanate, situated at the far end of the archipelago, was founded by the conversion of one Shah to Islam, who then adopted the name Muhammad Iskandar Shah. The dissemination of Islam among the ruling class was facilitated by intermarriages between Muslim traders and local women. Wealthier traders often entered into matrimonial alliances with the families of the ruling elite. As Indonesian rulers and royalty embraced Islam, their subjects followed suit, mirroring their conversion. This process contributed significantly to the widespread adoption of Islam across the archipelago. The expansion of Islam gained momentum in the 15th century, driven by the military might of the Malacca Sultanate in the Malay Peninsula and other Islamic sultanates that exerted dominance over the region. This expansion was facilitated by episodes of Muslim coups, warfare, and their superior control of maritime trade routes and key markets. By the 14th century, Islam had firmly established itself in northeast Malaya, Brunei, the southwestern Philippines, as well as in certain coastal areas of east and central Java. In the 15th century, the Hindu-Javanese Majapahit Empire saw a decline as Muslim traders from Arabia, India, Samara, the Malay Peninsula, and China began to dominate regional trade. These traders gradually usurped control over trade routes once monopolized by Javanese Majapahat merchants, leading to the weakening of the empire and the spread of Islam throughout the region. In the 15th century, the Ming Dynasty of China provided considerable support to the port city of Malacca. The renowned voyages led by Chinese Admiral Zheng He played a significant role in establishing Chinese Muslim settlements in Palembang and along the north coast of Java. Malacca actively encouraged the conversion to Islam in the region, while the Ming fleet's presence facilitated the formation of a Chinese Malay Muslim community in northeast coastal Java. This development created a lasting opposition to the Hindu population of Java. The expeditions resulted in the establishment of Muslim Chinese, Arab, and Malay communities in the northern ports of Java. With dominant Muslim kingdoms increasingly asserting their presence in the archipelago, the historical inhabitants, who were animists, Hindus, and Buddhists, began to embrace Islam. This shift was facilitated by Muslim merchants and traders who disseminated Islamic teachings while engaging in trade with the local population. Their teachings encouraged the spread of the religion through proselytization efforts. Hindus and Buddhists typically do not engage in active proselytization efforts, and Islam indeed prohibits its followers from believing in other gods. Additionally, being a Muslim often came with various privileges, benefits, and favorable terms compared to being a non-Muslim in many regions. As a result, some individuals sought safety, certainty, and improved social status by choosing to declare themselves Muslims. The introduction of Islam to Southeast Asia via trade with people from South Arabia and Indian Sufis contributed to a relatively peaceful transition compared to the conflicts witnessed in the Middle East or North Africa. In Indonesia, the process unfolded more gradually, primarily through the influence of merchant elites and nobles. The presence of monarchy facilitated the spread of the religion among the commoners, similar to how the presence of Christianity in European kingdoms facilitated its spread there. During this period, the Hindu Majapahit Empire in Java Island was experiencing a decline. New kingdoms emerged, some of which received support from Ming China. 
This support often came in the form of trade assimilation, royal conversions to Islam, and military conquests, contributing to the transformation of the political landscape in the region. By the end of the 16th century, Islam had indeed become the dominant religion in Java and Sumatra, overtaking Hinduism and Buddhism. However, despite this shift, many cultural and religious practices from the Hindu-Buddhist era persisted and were even integrated into Islamic rituals. Islam did not eradicate the pre-existing culture. Instead, it embraced and assimilated local customs and non-Islamic elements into its practices. The substantial influence of Sufism has indeed been recognized as a significant factor enabling the syncretism between Islam and other religions. When Europeans arrived, they introduced Christianity to regions with Muslim majorities. However, relatively few conversions occurred. This phenomenon could be attributed to the reduced emphasis on religious identity during that period compared to earlier centuries. However, further exploration of this topic would require a separate discussion. Indonesia is indeed a vast country, home to over 250 million people spanning diverse cultures and ethnicities across thousands of islands. While more than 80% of the population identifies as Muslim, Indonesia is not governed by a singular set of religious laws. Despite being recognized as one of the largest Muslim-majority countries globally, Indonesia does not adhere to a traditional Islamic state model. Indeed, Indonesia's constitution is not exclusively grounded in any particular religion. Instead, it encompasses a broad array of universal values that resonate with Islam as well as other religions. These principles are encapsulated in Pancasila, which serves as the five philosophical pillars of the country. Pancasila represents a set of foundational beliefs that promote national unity, social justice, and harmony among Indonesia's diverse population, regardless of religious affiliation.